Hi, I'm Elise and welcome to Witch Way. Today's review, some Italian witches in the 17th century with some awesome modern music, Luna Nera. Wow. Season 1 of this supernatural drama was released early 2020 and directed by trio Francesca Comancini, Suzanne Inicchiarelli and Paola Randi and is based off of Volume 1 of the upcoming Luna Nera trilogy by Tiziana Triana. She's also one of the writers of the show which stars Nina Fortaris as Ade, Giorgio Belli as Pietro, Manuela Mandraccia as Tebe, Lucretia Guidone as Leptis. Frederica Fercasi as Yanara and Adelisa Manfreda as Persepoli. Sorry for butchering those beautiful names. Based in 17th century Italy, Luna Nera follows Ade and her younger sibling. Their grandmother is accused of witchcraft and executed just as Ade's power begins to manifest and she learns she belongs to a group of powerful women, though she struggles to choose between love and her destiny. There was some interesting folklore in this series, so let's get into the which way. The strege or witches in this series all have varying innate abilities. Arde can sense death. We first see her assisting a midwife, her grandmother, and she senses the baby is dying. Because of the nature of childbirth, midwives were often accused of witchcraft. A accused witch would be tortured and interrogated to confess and name other accused witches just so the torture would stop, which would most likely lead to other innocents being accused and the cycle would continue. Persepolis had her hair cut off after she was accused of witchcraft and describes the process as weakening her and it has since never grown back. Since ancient times, hair was given magical attributes and if you had a piece of a person's hair, you would have power over them. The Malleus Maleficarum even goes as far as to suggest cutting or shaving the hair off the entire body of an accused witch. A pen test showed Natalia Bruno was proven to be a witch, both evil and profane. Now condemned to death. Other than confessions, interrogators would search for a witch's mark, another reason for removing the hair from the body. It could be anything from a pimple, a birthmark, a freckle. This mark would then be tested with a witch's pin. If they felt no pain, it was indeed a witch's mark, the sign of a pact with the devil. If found guilty of witchcraft, there was to be an execution. The preferred method in Europe, burning at the stake. Often the accused were killed first and then burnt, but it wasn't unheard of for them to be burnt alive. Inquisitors would usually carry out these trials and witch hunts, though in this series the Benandante take on that role. They differ greatly from the actual Benandante or Good Walkers. Yep, they were a thing. They were active during the 16th and 17th century. They were believed to be gifted with magical abilities if born with a call on their head, a remnant of the amniotic sac. Pietro was gifted with his during this series, so they kept in that little bit of lore. They were believed to have the ability to leave their bodies and battle malevolent witches at night. Sounds a lot like witchcraft to me, and apparently also to the Inquisition, who put an end to the Benandante after aligning their night battles and flights with witches attending their Sabbath. No nighttime flights here though, the Benandante here act more like the Inquisition and are hunting down witches to purge them in the name of God. Before Arde's grandmother is taken away by them, she tells Arde to seek out others like herself in the sanctuary. Tebe, Yanara and Antalia, Arde's mother, were apparently the most powerful of these witches. One of the original three, Yanara, her name itself another term for witch. They say that the last women to leave church on Christmas Eve are destined to become Yanara. This is linked to actual Italian folklore where the last one to leave mass on Christmas Eve or one born on Christmas Eve was believed to be a witch. These witches were entrusted with secrets and tutored by Diotima, their elder. Perhaps she was named after Diotima of Matinee, an ancient Greek prophetess and supposed witch who was accredited with postponing the plague in Athens, among other things. Diotima trusted these three, but not Maurizio or Reggie, who wanted these secrets for a darker purpose. 
When he uses magic, a sigil appears. This symbol is actually known as Akkad's Star and was created by Freyta Akkad, an occultist. Into it, he incorporated signs of the zodiac, names of Egyptian gods, the major arcana of the tarot, an 11 pointed star and numbers equaling to 11 to represent the Dukes of Edom, and the Sophias of Klipov. A six pointed star to represent the classical planets, a pentagram to represent the elements, Thelemic deities Hadit and Nut, and its word of the aeons, Abrahadabra, spelled out in Hebrew. That's a lot to fit into one symbol. Maurizio is caught trying to steal their secrets in the form of the Book of Kingdoms, so Antalya leaves with the book to try and keep it from his grasp. The others also leave, trying to seek out other witches like themselves and find Persepolis. But it isn't until Arde joins their ranks that they are able to actively track down others to join them. Tebe, the leader, has triskelions or triple spirals tattooed on her arms. This is an ancient symbol that many have tried to decipher. Some believe it stands for mind, body and soul, birth, life and death, and some modern pagans use it to represent earth, sky and sea. But it was also believed to be associated with triple goddesses such as Diana and Hecate. Deer were thought to be associated with Diana, and the series actually opens on a dead deer with Tebe reciting a Latin poem originally written by Roman Emperor Hadrian shortly before his death. Animula vagula blandula, hospis comesque corporis, que non cabibis in loca pallidula, rigida nudula, necut soles dabis iocos. The deer is one of 13 found dead. Some believe 13 to be an unlucky number, and apparently there were always 13 witches in a coven. Some accused corroborated this, though it wasn't always the case. Modern witches consider 13 a lucky number, appropriately aligned with the lunar cycles. Practicing witches would often identify different phases of the moon to complement specific spells and rituals. Waxing moon, a time for growth, full moon, intensity and fulfillment, waning moon for cutting ties, and new moon, a time for new beginnings. Something else that can happen during a new moon, a lunar nera or black moon, a solar eclipse. This is a time when the power of the sun and moon come together, a time for powerful new beginnings. I got to have a good look into Italian folklore with this review, so it gets marks for lore, history, and little teeny bits of the craft. I have questions though. If it was so dangerous for witches, why didn't they just kick Maurizio out and Antalya would stay in this fortified sanctuary? Which, what's the point of the fancy door? Because there is a secret entrance. Fix that up, that's just an invasion waiting to happen. This gorgeous series is available on Netflix in its original Italian with subtitles or a fairly decent English dub if you're into that. I'm more of a subtitled person myself. This season ends on quite a cliffhanger, so I'm hopeful for a season two, though I'm hoping no news is good news. So thank you very much for watching and remember to like and subscribe to keep up to date on my further videos here on The Witch Way.